area here, which will be considered positive because it's above the x-axis. But you'll be adding to that a negative area over here because it lies below the x-axis, okay? Negative area below is the correct value but the wrong sign because in general area is not negative, right? Just take the, the, the idea of area, correct. So <clears throat> area when below x-axis is what we're going to end up computing and positive when above. But it's going to add them together. Forget the algebra for one second. The computations we're about to do are going to add these two things together in the usual way, plus, and then subtract. So in this case, since this area below is much larger in magnitude than the area above, we'll get a negative answer overall. It is the net area it is the sum of the two. All right? So this will be an overall negative result when you compute it. Right, just keep that in mind. So we're always computing net area. <coughs> You have to be aware of where your function lies in the plane. All right. Back to first picture. We said before we cut this thing into rectangles, and Justin said the best approximations will be given when you use more rectangles. More rectangles are the approximation, correct? So if we break this into rectangles, however many, say n rectangles. I'm going to write out the formula for this using a right endpoint Raymond sum. You can use, or we're about to do, you can use any Raymond sum you want. The answer will always be the same. But I'm going to consistently use right endpoints because it makes the computation easier. Because why? The index will start at 1 on the summation. We saw that's what the formulas conform to. Okay? So we're going to use right endpoints. So right now, if you wanted to approximate the area of this curve using a right endpoint approximation, the sum. Um, I equals 1 to n, however many rectangles you should choose. Whatever the function is, and we said that was A plus I delta x times delta x. There is our right endpoint Raymond sum. Everybody agree with that? This is what we just did. No difference. So now, like Justin was saying, as n increases, the approximation will always get better. Right? It doesn't matter if it's overestimate or underestimate. It doesn't matter at all. The approximation is going to always get better. There will be less error involved in how far away the rectangles are from the curve, whether you use right, right or left. It doesn't matter. Right? As you shrink these widths here, then the rectangle will conform more to the height of the curve. Right? Okay. So how many rectangles should we use? We want to compute the exact area. Yeah, we use infinite rectangles. We use infinite rectangles. Correct. Is this going to have a limit to it? That's correct. Because you can't really get to infinity, so it has to be limited. Very good. So what we're going to do now is call those symbols over there. Right. This is called the definite integral. It is the exact area. It's the exact net area between the curve and the x-axis. The exact net area between curve and x-axis right, is what we're calling definite integral. And at this moment, this has absolutely nothing to do with antiderivatives. Right? At this moment, nothing. They happen to use the same Kirby symbol, and that's as much of a comparison as we have between the two right now. Okay? So definite integral, we're going to define these symbols, a to b of said function, <coughs> dx, that pile of symbols there, is going to represent this thing. But this thing, when we take the limit as n goes to infinity, that is, we're increasing the number of rectangles to as arbitrary large as one. So i equals 1 to n. The other thing you should note is that delta x, we said the formula was b minus a on n. So what is delta x approaching as n goes to infinity? Is this a small number? Zero. zero. It's approaching zero. That is, as you increase the number of rectangles, certainly the width of each rectangle must be decreasing well, towards zero, right? Otherwise you can't fit into the of a minute. So sometimes the book and some textbooks write like this. They write delta x going towards zero. It's another way they write it. It means the same exact thing. 
Okay? I'm going to use the end notation, n going to infinity. And you just have to remember what that implies about delta x. It has no real impact on the computation you do. But just conceptually, you should realize the width of each rectangle is going to zero. Okay? Now again, when the book uses these symbols or a problem uses these symbols in this section, it has nothing to do with antiderivatives, and it means this. Matter of fact, that is its definition. Can you write that up? What? You can't see it? Well, I mean, these things in the place. Then we have to cut off your head and put it back on. <laughs> just, take a, just take a second. Carter took a picture, he can email it to you. All right. <laughs> so now, give me a, a curve. Let's do the x squared minus 1. We had that before, right? x squared minus 1. Let's do that curve. Do you remember that problem or not? I'm going to warn you. That's something that you're doing. We said x squared minus 1. So it was down here. And we went from 2 to 4. Is that right? I think that's right. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 8. So 2 to 4. And we said that gave us values of 5, 10, 15, something like that. That's how we scaled it. Should have raised that picture, Dick. So 2 led us to what? 3 f of x is x squared minus 1. So at 2, we're at 3. At 4, we're at 15. So here was the curve, basically, something like that. We used four rectangles to approximate this before, right? We used four rectangles. Results, what answer did we get when we used four rectangles to approximate this thing? Um, yeah, four. Four. Okay, so Raymond sum. Raymond sum. It was right endpoints, so we did an easier computation. Uh, it was a complete over approximation. 79 on 4. Agreed? On the right side? That's what we did. That's right, what we yeah. did. That's not what we're doing. That's what we did. We did this exact problem yeah. not that long ago. No, I was just talking about the RE. That means right what? Right endpoints. Okay. Four rectangles. We use four rectangles. Correct angles. And equal four rectangles. Okay. And it was an overestimate. So 79 over 4 is much larger than the actual area under the curve. Now we're going to go through a very similar process, but it is a little more intense. And we're going to find the exact area of the curve, right? Exact. Find the exact area. explain what a definite integral is, and we'll work backwards to much more sim simpler things, right? So this is the hardest thing you've seen. It's the hardest thing in 5.2. Oh. In 5.2. It probably actually is the hardest thing in chapter 5. It probably is. Okay. This thing we're about to do is probably the hardest thing in 5. Yeah, because <clears throat> this, what we're about to do, look at what we're If you're just thinking about the way we, the way somebody else constructed the classroom to teach it, which I think is also reasonable, is this. We start out with definitions of things, and they usually involve limits. We had a limit definition of derivative, right? We had a limit definition 